Professor Jalachi, thank you for joining us. Um, we know that you're here for Hongqiao International Economics Forum, and the uh, World Openness Index for 2023 is going to be released at that forum. But according to the figure that released during the past three years, uh, it seems like the world openness is shrinking. Do you think the trend of economic and uh, trade globalization has been reversed? I think uh, if we use the old definition of uh, globalization, like uh, any country trading with any other country in the world, we indeed see some reduction in the intensity of trade. But if we go deeper, we actually see that this uh, decline has been substituted by an increase uh, of trade within regions. There is a tendency, natural tendency, for countries to trade more with neighboring countries. Uh, so I see more of a multipolar uh, development of trade. Europe will trade a bit more within itself. The US with Canada, Mexico and with Europe, China with Asia, Africa and so on. So I take a, a little bit more positive uh, stance of this uh, apparent negative trend of globalization. So say multilateral trade. Multilateral trade and uh, the emergence of many centers uh, of trade. Then here comes the question about uh, Belt and Road Initiative. Well, to my understanding, it's relatively very loose. Um, it's, it's MOU. I think in that sense, um, maybe it's, it's also your reason to support BRI from the very first place. You think it's very important that it, your country is there, witness all those, what's happening. You are absolutely right. I tell you, even if in the worst case, the Belt and Road have brought zero economic benefit to, to Italy directly, I, as a uh, former uh, vice minister, and uh, uh, to try to help my companies, I wanted to be involved in what was going on. It's the biggest infrastructure development project of mankind for the last 100 million years. It's about uh, developing Asia, it's about developing Africa, it's also about developing certain parts of Europe, it's about 6.5 billion people that need uh, transport, highways, uh, ports, airports, uh, high-speed rail. And uh, I wanted to study and learn uh, the China-Pakistan economic corridor. I want to know what China is doing in Africa with the Mombasa uh, railway in uh, Kenya. I want to know what investment there are in, in green energy. I want to witness, uh, at the very least, uh, so that I can learn. What do you think are the industries or fields that we could work together in the future? I was going to say electric vehicles, because we need them. China has them. They're good, they're cheap, and we don't want to depend on oil. We, we want to have electricity, which can be produced from many sources. Oil, but also gas, solar, nuclear and others. So at the same time, we need to protect our own industry, our car manufacturing industry that uh, is not ready to do EV. And let's be honest, Chinese EV are the best in the world. Even the Tesla made here in Shanghai tend to be the best in the world because you have an ecosystem, an environment. Uh, you have a CATL that makes batteries. Uh, so you have the whole integration, the expertise. Uh, you have cluster. And uh, some people say, oh, that's a competition, it could be dangerous. Uh, yes, but uh, if we know that someone competes with us, we are pushed to make them even better. This is the concept of win-win, that uh, it is very difficult for some countries uh, to accept uh, because they focus on the negative side of the cooperation and there is also the positive side. Let's hope um, more people understand this is not a zero-sum game here. Um, we, we could find a way to multilaterally win. Thank you very much, Professor, for sharing, and uh, really appreciate it. Hope Thank to you. see you again at CIE venue very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.